Hello and welcome to this quick tip from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson and today what I'm going to show you is another add-on that is bundled with the latest Blender 2.56 and it's a really cool one for those of you out there that want to create any kind of landscape environment. Uh, what it does, it allows you to basically generate a procedural landscape based on a variety of different factors such as the one that you can see on screen here. Uh, I've never actually touched this mesh as far as editing it in edit mode. It's been completely generated through the add-on, and that add-on is called ANT Landscape. So real quick here, you know, we've got this pretty cool landscape, but let's just delete this and see how it works. First things first, uh, assuming that you're just starting, you need to go ahead and activate the add-on by going to your user preferences, which in this case I just hit Control-Alt-U, and then you can find it underneath the mesh category, or excuse me, add mesh category, and you'll find the Add Mesh ANT landscape. And you can see the author, the version number, the link to wiki, etc. And this, then you just need to enable it by clicking the checkbox, and then you can close your user preferences and add a landscape by hitting either Shift A or going to the Add menu here and choosing Mesh Landscape. And immediately when you do that, you'll find a very small landscape that looks pretty cool, although it's fairly simple. And then we can go ahead and adjust the settings. You can do this via the operator panel, either down here or by pressing F6 to bring everything up. In this case, I'm just going to drag the top of this panel by hovering over the divider, and I'm just going to drag it all the way up until it's, you know, I can see most of it. And I might also just hit, hit Shift Space to maximize my view, just so that I've got a little bit more screen real estate to work with. So in this, we can see a variety of different settings. First off, we have Mesh Update, which by default is enabled. And if we turn that off as we change settings, it will not dynamically update as we go. But in this case, I'm going to leave it on. Next, we have Sphere, uh, which you notice it will immediately create a kind of a rocky boulder shape. So this is really good if you want to create boulders. Uh, in this case, we're going to just stick with the landscape. Next, we have our subdivision level. By default, it's set to 64. If you wanted a decent you know, landscape from a distance, you might set this to 128. And if you needed something really close, you would set it quite a bit higher. Just be aware that with every subdivision, you are increasing your memory and your poly count uh, exponentially, and so it's going to get pretty slow if you start adding in a bunch. Uh, going much past, say, 256 is probably not recommended for most machines. But that being said, you can. Next, we've got our mesh size. You can see we can just scale up the entire mesh. But something to note is this does not just scale the end result. In fact, it scales the area in which the texture which is being used to generate the landscape is applied in. Such that as I increase this, say if I were to increase it to 10, you'll notice that my landscape actually looks kind of just lumpy. And this is because the texture at a small size looked great, you know, because everything is very small and it's just kind of constrained to these sizes. But then that same texture scaled up doesn't look very good. So what we can do is take the mesh, mesh size, say to 5 or something like that, and then go on down and work with the other settings right in here. So first we have the type of, of terrain that we're going to be using. We've got all these different options. Uh, you, know, you can get a lot of different kinds of terrains, and honestly the best thing that I recommend is just to play with them to kind of see what you like and what works. You know, here you can see kind of maybe some rocky rolling hills with a marble effect. We've got the distorted noise for... Uh, maybe some very sharp kind of sand dune effect. We've got the turbulence, you know, all these different ones that we can play with to get quite a few different effects. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and just use the ridged multifractal. Uh, it gets kind of a rocky mountain ridge rain. Think, think maybe Mordor from Lord of the Rings or something is kind of what you'll get. Next, we've got the random seed. So, you know, if you don't like the way that it looks with the first one, but you still want to use these settings, you can just scroll through the seed to change the, the seed that it's using such that, you know, you'll notice that it's just changing the terrain and you can just go until you find one that you like. Uh, and I actually really kind of like this third one right there. I like that a lot. And then we've got the noise size. So let's say if we take this up to five, you can see exactly what happens and the noise it increases. So this is kind of the same effect as scaling up the mesh in object mode uh, rather than scaling up. So it, you'll notice that the overall effect of the noise is over a much larger area. If we were to take this down to say 0.1, you would see much smaller details and due to the resolution of our mesh, starts to become a bit of a disaster. So, you know, a good size in this case might be something like, uh, yeah, actually that's really nice. You know, it's a kind of a nice 
rocky, rocky ridge type sort of feel, but right now it's very shallow. And so we can increase that. Uh, we can increase the small details by using the depth value. You notice that if you take this down to one, you get just basically the main details in there. If you take this high, up higher, you get a lot of the smaller details in there. So it's a hard or a softer or a harsher effect. Then we've got the dimension value. I believe, let's see, fractal dimension of the roughest areas. So if we just take this up to say 10, we can actually see the maximum value is one and you can see what's happening. Again, we get a softer effect or you take it down to 0.1 and you get that sort of effect. So maybe we'll take our dimension to just leave it at the default one. Then we've got the uh, lacunarity, I believe it's pronounced, something like that, which you can just kind of play with this to see what you get. But you'll notice as I scroll through the values here, it definitely changes the effect. And actually, that one looks pretty cool, although I think that I'm going to, again, stick with the default of, oh, let's try two. Yeah, just default of two. Then we've got our offset right here which you can raise the terrain from sea level. So notice as I raise this up, we're pushing the, the terrain upwards. And then you'll notice that we then max out at this value, which actually happens to be uh, at one, which if you look down here, you'll notice that on the next set, our plateau is set to one. And so we can actually set the maximum value of our terrain, or if we wanted to say flatten it out. So if we set this to 1.5, you'll notice that it raises up a bit more. And if we set this all the way to two, then we don't have any plateau. And so we can control the maximum height of the terrain or use that to actually affect the terrain itself. Uh, let's see. We can go ahead and maybe we'll take this down to, say, 1.5. would be just about right for just kind of what we're looking at here. And that should be about right. Then we've also got the gain value. We can just scale the entire thing. And you notice that actually doesn't seem to have a lot of effect except for in the, the, you know, between zero and one, you see a very large difference, but up above one, you see very little change actually. So you can play with this as you wish. And we'll just take that down and that starts to look pretty good right there. Next, we've got in the next panel, we have invert, which allows us to actually invert the noise. And so with the right settings, you can actually use this to create more like bulbous hills or where you've got kind of round hills that then have these these trenches or gouges kind of cut through them very easily. Uh, we've also turning the invert off. We have the total height scale. You can see if we set this to say two and see immediately what happens. Again, this will max out at the plateau. So we can take that up to five and then we've got the height of our terrain. And so this is a setting that you'll be playing with a lot. You know, it's basically just like scaling something along the Z axis. We also have the offset value to offset that same height. So this way, we're not actually affecting the, the depth of the noise. We're just affecting the, the point at which that noise is applied. So you notice I'm just basically moving the entire area upwards. Take that back down to, say, point, negative 0.03 or something like that. Uh, then we should actually be able to take that down as well. Yeah, so you can, you know, if you want to grab just the peaks or if you wanted to do this coming through. Unfortunately, you know, we cannot, since this is a, an, an object that we're adding, we can't actually go in and animate these values. Uh, well, actually, I suppose you could through some, some trickery, but, you know, just by default, you can't. Uh, but it could get some very cool effects in there, and there might be something I should look into. But next, we, again, we've got the plateau. And then lastly, we have the sea, sea level, which actually allows us to set the sea level value so we can raise this up. So here, you know, maybe we've got some, uh, a lake in our mountain range right here. We can set the fall off type to one or let's see to two only along the y axis or only along the x axis kind of you can get some different effects right in there then we also have the strata which based on my test i don't know exactly what it does but maybe let's see if we take this down you can kind of see what's happening as far as like what you're it's actually supposed to be representing I don't know but you can see how you know we're now we're getting kind of multiple levels within the the terrain that can could be very cool if we take that up we get some interesting effects or if you take it down again you get some very interesting effects but I'll just set this strata to none and there we go so you know get some very cool effects maybe at this point now that I've got this kind of where I like it 
I could go ahead and take the subdivisions up to say 256, get a lot more detail in there, and suddenly that looks really, really cool. Or maybe I'll even uh, be a bit daring and take this to 512, hoping that my RAM can handle it. And it may just take just a little while. And that, oh, there we go. Yeah, so now I'm getting some really nice detail in there, as you can see. And, you know, even detail that once combined with textures and such, you could go ahead and render that and get some pretty darn nice results. So there you go. There's using the a and uh, landscape add-on. Very cool tool for creating some procedural landscapes that, you know, if you were to try and do this by hand, would be very difficult and probably wouldn't look half as well.